Okay, this video is about the nitric oxide um, peroxynitrite nitrite cycle of Martin Paul. He wrote this book here called Explaining Unexplained Illness. The guy's a genius. He's a physicist and a biologist. And it relates to understanding congestive heart failure, but also a lot of other diseases. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, multiple chemical sensitivity, fibromyalgia, Gulf War syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, possibly uh, some forms of dementia, and Parkinson's disease and ALS. This is a big, important disease. Um, so the NO stands for NO for nitric oxide. The ONO is O-N-O-O, -O, stands for peroxynitrite. And what these are is these are mechanisms of disease that destroy cells. And I'm also going to let you know, this talk is an, an, an AO, an academic orgasm. I figured out ways to counter this cycle that are very beautiful and elegant and can really help uh, you to maintain your health and to help you. You probably got some friends or loved ones uh, that have these problems. Look at this paper. It's like 50 pages. So I'm cranking through the paper. I'm reading it in great detail. It took a lot of time because I wanted to really understand it. Plus, I read the guy's book. You know, look at this book. It's a big, thick book. A small print, small print biochemistry with no pictures, okay? He's kind of an Asperger autistic guy, uh, but he is a genius. So anyways, so what's this all about? Basically, the no oh no cycle is a set of um, essentially vicious cycles. So a vicious cycle is a cycle that feeds back on itself. And that's what the no oh no pathway is. And in a sense, what it reminded me of, imagine your body, your health is like a castle under siege. And the vicious cycles keep attacking it in so many do, in so many different ways. They're firing a cannonball to bring down the walls. They got a battering ram slashing at the door. They got flaming catapults and flaming arrows trying to set the roofs on fire. They've got a wall to scale the walls, you know, grappling hooks, catapults, okay? So it's bad, you know? You're crapping in your pants saying, how are we going to survive this? How can the heart protect itself once all this stuff has started down the path. And I'm going to tell you, here's what it comes down to. Uh, basically, you better start getting your act together. The sooner the better, preferably before age 35, but the sooner the better, because otherwise you just keep accumulating these problems and you're going to start running into the Martin Paul. His name's Martin Paul, P-A-L, P-A-L-L -L for Paul, cycle where they're just destroying cells, destroying cells, destroying cells. And you start to reach then a critical mass moment where the damage is irreversible, okay? And I see this all day. I mean, the average patient's 60 years old. I don't even need to look in the chart. They're fat, sick, and stupid. They're hypertensive, diabetic, pre-diabetic, overweight, coronary artery disease, impotence, and then some manifestation of abdominal pressure syndrome, some manifestations of cerebral vascular disease, probably a cataract surgery, um, probably poor dentition. All these things go together. Okay, so anyways... If you keep, continue behaving like a chump, eating meat, oil, processed foods, you're going to be on pill after pill after pill, drug, 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 the drugs don't work so well, chop, 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 surgery, bye-bye money, prematurely dead, broken dead. Okay, um, if you're smart, you learn a little bit about nutrition and health, become a low-fat vegan, and uh, avoid all the toxins, and you probably won't need to take any pills. I don't take any pills. I'm 60. I have no medical problems. Uh, the Johnson will keep working. And eventually you probably die on average around 90. Okay, that's how it works. And I'm going to explain to you, you know, what this cycle is all about. So here's the cover of his book, uh, Explaining Unexplained Illness. And it's a cool book. It's a, it's a brilliant book. It's a work of genius. Okay, um, it's in my, it was in my list of top 50 books of all time. Uh, top 50 health books of all time. All right. And this guy, he's really smart. He's a biologist and a physicist. And I get the impression from his papers that he just sits around reading all day. Okay. Uh, and he, like I said, he's got a, he's got an emotional range like about this narrow, you know, compared to a woman. A woman's got a range like this. Okay, his, his, his emotional range like this. <laughs> but he's brilliant. Okay. All right. So here's just one paper, just to give you a sense of what it's all about. Okay, this paper is written by these guys, Brown and Nahar. So it says, when you stimulate nitric oxide, okay, nitric oxide synthase. Um, NOx, it can be abbreviated. It can actually be abbreviated FOX as well, NADPH oxidase. Um, it can be stimulated by cytokines with, due to inflammation, by beta amyloid protein due to insulin resistance, by LPS due to leaky gut, by arachidonic acid from eating meats. You only get arachidonic acid from a meat diet. Okay, um, that's going to increase. It produces superoxide anions, O2 minus. That's a free radical unpaired electron in the outer orbital. I'll show that in a moment. And 
that associated with increased inose, inducible nitric oxide synthase, is going to lead to the production of a lot of peroxynitrite, O-N-O-O. -O -O. So this cycle of no and O-N-O -O is the no O-N-O -O cycle. Okay, I'm going to get into that, but the reason I'm showing you this paper is just to let you know, this is not Martin Paul who started with all this stuff. These are well-known uh, pathways of destructive cell damage. Okay. I'm going to get into more of the details in a moment, but I'm, right now I'm just trying to show you the big picture. Here's another uh, paper. It basically explains the same thing in different words, how the no-o-no -oh -no cycle is just destroying brain cells, destroying mitochondria, destroying the circa pump, destroying the PMCA pump of the plasma membrane calcium ATPase. Okay, so here's Martin Paul's paper. That's him. Martin Paul spelled P-A-L-L. -L. The no-o-no -oh -no cycle as the central cause of heart failure. So what he's saying here, and this is a big statement, he's saying is the main thing that causes heart failure is the nitric oxide peroxynitrite cycle. And he's the one who figured it out. Other people had elucidated pretty much every single step in these cycles. But what he figured out is that they're all connected, and about five of them in particular uh, lead to the formation of vicious cycles. A vicious cycle is, is one that feeds back on itself and amplifies itself. So it just continues. It's not going to stop on its own. It just becomes worse and worse, progressively destroying cells. Okay? So here's what he says it right here. None of the elements of the cycle or the mechanism linking them are original but they collectively produce the most robust nature of the no-o-no -oh -no cycle, which creates a major challenge for the treatment of heart failure. Basically, nobody knows how to treat this. Okay, he doesn't know how to treat it. In his book here, he recommends you know, a supplement or two, and so that's why I know more than him, because knowing what causes stuff is more important than knowing what happens at the end, and I'll, I'll explain that in more detail, but he talks about oxidative stress, so he talks about antioxidants, you know, but he really doesn't know what to do. He was able to figure out the disease, but he doesn't know what to do. Don't worry, Martin, I'm here for you. I'll help you out. You're a good guy. I know you're autistic, but you're really smart, and I'm going to help you out here, okay? So I want you to get a sense of the feeling. Also, I want you to get a sense of the intellectual power of this guy, Martin Paul. So after reading, you know, like a thousand papers, all right, he says, there are 34 specific mechanisms of the no oh no cycle. Okay, number one, extremely rapid diffusion, um, diffusion limited reaction between nitric oxide and superoxide to form peroxynitrite. So what he's saying is, if you've got superoxide free in your mitochondrial matrix and any nitric oxide gets in there, it's going to react with the uh, nitric oxide and superoxide are going to react before superoxide dismutase can get to them. Even though superoxide dismutase is one of the fastest enzymes known to mankind, he said you're still screwed. All right. So what he's kind of telling you here is, you are screwed. There's nothing you could do. Your heart is toast. Your brain is toast. Okay, so he, he's making this argument. This is what he's doing. He's building up this argument to show you just how screwed your heart and your brain are. Peroxynitrite is a potent oxidant, and it can increase the activity of transcription factor nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, so what he's telling you is, it's going to make the things to make more of itself. This is like artificial intelligence gone rogue, peroxynitrite. It destroys all the good stuff, destroys the mitochondria, destroys the circuit pump, destroys the plasma membrane calcium ATPase, and then enhances the things that build more uh, of itself, peroxynitrite, until it can just kill everything, okay? So it increases nuclear factor, kappa B, that's a vicious cycle, okay? Um, what are some more of the things he says? Uh, all right, well, anyways, it's more of that sort of stuff. All these ways in which, and then he talks about inos being induced. That's inducible nitric oxide synthase. That means the type that's associated with the microglia in the brain and the astrocytes, and it's also, especially the microglia, and it's also formed in the immune system cells. So it's inducible, meaning that it, once it goes on, it can stay on for a long time in comparison with the constitutive calcium dependent, you know, endothelial nitric oxide synthase or um, neuronal nitric ox oxide synthase, they only stay on a short amount of time. So inducible is much more dangerous, producing tons and tons of nitric oxide that you don't want. I'll explain what that's all about in just a moment. But basically, he hammers through 34 points saying, this is iron tight. We've got every nail you can imagine on the coffin. Ain't nobody getting out of this dead, okay? And it's the medical equivalent of saying the castle of your heart and your brain is under siege and we have got so many things coming at it, there is no way for it to survive, okay? So it's a real doomsday statement. What he's, he's nailing it in that the nitric oxide peroxynitrite cycle is so bad, nothing will escape from this, okay? That's what he's basically saying. And at first I'm like, gosh, that's kind of depressing, but I started thinking about some other things. Oh, just one quick illustration. I thought this was kind of cool. 
Um, I heard somebody say that the brain is so important to the human body that it protects it with a bunker. And that's pretty much what it does. Here's a bunker, okay, just a little spot to look out of, and that's what our brain basically is. We got a little spot to look out with our eyeballs. Everything else is shielded by our skull to protect our brain. So if the nature thinks your brain's that important, you should too. Now here's a secret of how to fight back against the Martin Paul nitric oxide peroxide nitride cycle, the no oh no cycle. And the way to do it is to think about a basketball game. It could be any sport, but like a basketball game where one team is ahead by, let's say, 40, 50 points, okay? They're so far ahead that they can put in all the scrubs because they know no matter what happens, they're going to win the game. The game's already been decided, okay? And Martin Paul has a little bit of this attitude. Once peroxy nitrate gets going with the vicious cycle constantly amplifying itself, the patient's screwed. They're dead, okay? There's nothing you can do. Their heart is trashed. Their brain is trashed. It's goodbye. The horse is out of the barn. Say la vie. A fait la, fait la compi. Ah, a fait accompli. Okay? So that's what he's saying. And what I'm saying is, hold on a sec. Maybe not. Yeah, sure. It's garbage time. But it's garbage time because all he's talking about is after the whole cycle is set running. And he's assuming that the initiators of the cycle will continue. But they don't have to. Okay? And that's what I'm going to show you. What I'm about to show you is um, an academic orgasm. Okay? It's beautiful. So first of all, getting back to the siege mentality, we've got the castle under siege. They got the battering rams charging into the door. They've got um, the guys digging a moat so they can go in a tunnel underneath the moat and dig under the walls of the castle. Okay. Um, they got the ladders scaling the walls. They got the flaming arrows coming in on the roofs. Okay. They got the crossbow over here. They got a lot of stuff all geared up. They got reinforcements coming in. They have the entire castle circled on siege. It's pretty brutal, okay? So here's just one more picture of it. You know, the cannon's taking the wall down. It's not looking good for the people in the castle, which is you and me, all right? So now I'm going to show you. Here's a Martin Paul diagram, and I know this is a busy slide, but it, it will start to make sense. The way all these, these drawings here, there's one, two, three, four, five of them, are essentially the same, except in each particular one, he has different dotted arrows to show you the component of the cycle that he's talking about. Okay, so in this one, for example, when you get elevated inos, inducible nitric oxide synthase, meaning the nitric oxide synthase located in, you know, immune cells, you can think I for immune cells also inducible, uh, microglia cells in the brain, they're immune cell of the brain. It's going to produce tons and tons of nitric oxide. Okay, when you get tons and tons of nitric oxide right here, that then is going to react with nitric oxide. Some of it's going to get in the mitochondria, react with superoxide, and that's going to form peroxy nitrite, O-N-O-O. -O -O. And that O-N-O-O -O -O is just going to go around destroying things, destroying the mitochondria, destroying the plasma membrane, calcium ATPase, destroying the circle pumps on the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and it's going to just kill the cells, all right? He also says oxidative stress contributes to all of this, and it can activate nuclear factor kappa B, leading to more inos, etc., Okay, this stuff up here is circled in orange because these are all things activated by, uh, related to increased calcium in the cytoplasm. So trip receptors also let increased calcium into the cytoplasm. They're activated by alcohol, by cell phones. Uh, NMDA has got a whole bunch of things activating it, excitotoxins. They're going to increase calcium in the cytoplasm. Increased calcium in the cytoplasm will increase neuronal nitric oxide synthase and endothelial nitric oxide synthase, meaning making more nitric oxide. Okay, I'm going to address the whole stuff with caldwell esselstyn and nitric oxide in a moment. That's a separate issue, but I'll explain how to distinguish it separately. Okay, so, you know, you start looking at this and you're like, holy shit, there's, you know, five different ways that this cycle just feeds back on itself. And it seems once it gets going, I call it, you got vicious cycles and congestive heart failure out the wazoo. There's so many of them. Everything just looks desperate, hopeless, and it's a doom, okay? It's inevitable doom is what it looks like. Once you get going with all these cycles, they just keep building on themselves, okay? Like I said, nitric oxide right here, O-N-O-O, -O, destroys all the good stuff, destroys the mitochondria, destroys the plasma membrane calcium ATPase, destroys the circle pump. Those are calcium pumps to get calcium out of the cytoplasm. It destroys them. Well, what could you do to fight back? Well, if you eat your plants, you're going to get more antioxidants. Those help prevent oxidative stress, okay? I, did, I wrote grounding in here, and I haven't tested grounding to be positive it really works, but I can tell you, I bought a grounding mat. I made a video about that about a week ago or so, and I've been doing it every day now for a couple of weeks, and man, I'm sleeping better than I have in years. And that's what a lot of people commented on from their grounding, and I think, I think it works. I mean, I realize it might be placebo. I don't care. I know I'm sleeping better than ever, so I'm better than I have in over a decade, so I'm liking it. 
All right, um, what's next? He talks about tetrahydrobiopterin uh, being important for making, as a cofactor for making uh, the uh, nitric oxide, okay? And if that's not, if that's depleted, which it often is, then you're gonna make superoxide um, instead. And so it's basically called uncoupling the nitric oxide synthase enzymes, okay? Now, what will do that? What will deplete that? Well, if you have a lack of dietary folate, meaning you don't eat enough plants, it'll get depleted. If you're hypertensive, hypertensive, uh, hypertension depletes it as well. There's a few other things that do it too. Um, anyways, those will lead to making more superoxides, which are more vulnerable to reacting with nitric oxide to form peroxynitrite, okay? Uh, hypertension depletes uh, tetrahydrobiopterin. It also increases nuclear factor kappa B, which is going to turn on INO. So it's a screw job. All right. Well, anyways, I'm giving you some points. The plants are giving you the antioxidants. Grounding can help you get some uh, more negative ions into your cell. Folate comes from foliage, from plants. Okay. And that helps prevent uh, tetrahydrobiopterin uh, depletion. Okay. So that's good. All right, now here's another part of the cycle that's going to be emphasized. Inflammation will increase nuclear factor kappa B, as well as all these inflammatory cytokines like ILF, IL-6, you know, TNF-alpha, interferon. Okay, uh, so anyways, what can you do to prevent that? Well, first of all, don't eat an inflammatory diet. You know, when you eat meat, the sat fat, you know, begins inflammation and it causes myeloperoxidase to be released by the, uh, the neutrophils and that damages the glycocalyx of all your arteries. Okay, and then nuclear factor kappa B, transcription factor goes to the uh, nucleus, increases inos, activation, does a lot of other bad stuff. Um, you got other things that give you increased oxidative stress, including being iron overloaded. So avoid eating excess iron, avoid red meat, avoid iron fortified food. Um, you get excess AL, that comes from your uh, tap water and from some other sources, and you want to avoid that. Get a water filter, you need a water filter to, to prevent that. Okay, and in processed food, junk food, meat diet, there's no antioxidants in meat, very little in processed food. So you don't want to eat those foods. But if you eat the plant foods, you get lots of antioxidants, which are going to help you fight back against oxidative stress. They are your friends. Okay, so what's more things that are happening bad here in this uh, set of interlocking vicious cycles? If you've got excitotoxins or anything opening up the trip receptors or calcium channels to let calcium into the center of the cardiac cell or the neuron. When I say cardiac cell or neuron, what I'm talking about is this is what's happening in the heart for congestive heart failure. But the same thing happens in the brain for excitotoxicity and apoptosis, brain damage. So by going through what I'm talking about here, you learn how to protect not just your heart, but also how to protect your brain. Okay, the NMDA channels are the, the same channels. You know, they're the ones that bind glutamate and they let calcium into the cell. So if you've got trip receptors open and NMDA receptors open, you're letting a lot of calcium into the cell. So what does this? Beta amyloid protein, and that's increased when you're eating a lot of high fat, so you get insulin resistance, and then you deplete your insulin-degrading enzyme, use it up on the high insulin levels, and it can't clear out the BAP, beta amyloid protein. Uh, cell phones will open up voltage-gated calcium channels. Um, caffeine increases uh, glutamate transmission. It also opens up the ryanodine uh, calcium channels on the endoplasmic reticulum, so it increases uh, calcium channels. Stress will do the same thing. Sleep deprivation does the same thing. Stress, sleep deprivation, and caffeine all open up those channels, and they all increase uh, glutamate transmission. They increase the same hormones, cortisol and, and uh, catecholamines in the blood. Um, excitotoxins are things that increase NMDA receptor, for example. And there's a lot of them. Glutamate, MSG, MFG, aspartame, uh, glyphosate, okay? Uh, stimulants will do this as well, attention deficit meds, okay? Uh, homocysteine is actually an NMDA receptor uh, excitotoxin increasing its activity. Okay, then here you see what happens when you have depleted ATP, lowered ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the energy currency of a cell. Well, BPA can do that, the hard plastic that's estrogenic. Um, things that inhibit the circuit and the plasma membrane calcium ATP as pumps can have the same effect. Basically, all of these things make it harder to get calcium out of your cytoplasm, so they keep uh, processes abnormally activated. Okay, mitochondrial inhibitors and drugs. Uh, if you inhibit the mitochondria, you can't make that much ATP. Then you can't run your ion pumps in the plasma membrane like your potassium sodium ion pumps. And you're not going to be able to get that calcium out of the cytoplasm, so the cell is going to be overactivated. And an overactivated cell is going to go into apoptosis, cytotoxicity death, because it's going to keep on letting in calcium. That excess calcium coming in is going to elevate endo, so you're going to make tons of nitric oxide. That's going to drift into the mitochondria and form peroxynitrate, lead to secondary problems. 
Um, you're going to activate these protease enzymes like calpane. That's going to just start destroying things. Okay, um, what else? So these are the mitochondria inhibitors. They're really bad. Circa inhibitors, really bad. Plasma membrane calcium ATPs, not too many of those, but they're bad as well. Okay, let's look at a different part of the cycle here. Um, here is emphasis on nuclear factor kappa B, the inflammatory cytokines, and inos. Okay, so nuclear factor kappa B is going to turn on inos. These inflammatory cytokines are going to turn on inos. Inos is inducible nitric oxide synthase. So what will do that as well? Anything that starts with the letter I, ischemia, meaning lack of blood flow, insulin resistance, um, Insulin resistance is associated with producing increased advanced glycation end products. Trauma will also do it. Leaky gut will do it because it increases LPS and LTA, and they create this whole sequence of inflammatory processes, including making the blood more thrombotic, including binding to immune cells, which have pattern recognition receptors, PRRs, and they sense that as being a bacterial invasion of the body, so they'll start releasing toxic chemicals to sterilize their surrounding environment. Okay, and those will have collateral damage, damaging normal cells. So anyways, you're looking at this, and it's looking pretty bad. It's like, how does this per poor person survive? What could they do? And, well, you know what? Improve your blood flow. If you improve your blood flow, you won't have ischemia. Ischemia means lack of blood flow. All right, so how do you do that? Well, what, what causes ischemia? If you have a high-fat diet stick in the red blood cells, that's a bridging molecule. Drops oxygen delivery. If you've got activation of your fibrinogen, the clot, due to LPS and LTA from leaky gut, that's prothrombotic, causes ischemia, all right? You got high dietary sodium, it vasoconstricts everything, narrows all the arteries, so that's going to also give you tissue ischemia, lack of oxygen delivery. The hypertension is also going to damage these parts of the pathway like I spoke about a moment ago. So you really want to avoid insulin resistance. Plus, you'll produce increased advanced glycation end products, glycating things, thickening capillary basement membranes, just causing random problems all over the place. You need dietary fiber from plants so you don't get leaky gut, and that way you can block out LPS and LTA, the bacterial endotoxins, from exerting these secondary effects, okay? Better blood flow comes from plants, okay? If you got your psychological stuff right, have a sense of strong purpose in life. I've had lots of times where people are very mean to me or doing bad things to me, and, you know, what I sort of say to myself, because I have a couple purposes in life, I'm able to just keep functioning, even though there's times when I'm sad and I feel mistreated, you know, whatever, that works, okay? You, you kind of need to have that if you're going to be strong and resilient, okay? So it's sort of like, um, that's, that's a key thing, okay? A lot of people have talked about that. If a man has a purpose, you know, if he has a why, he can survive any what, you know, all that stuff. And then in the end, you get into Schopenhauer, Dostoevsky, Viktor Frankl, and just, you know. All right, um, plants. Plants also vasodilate to improve blood flow. They've got the potassium and the magnesium. They both have the function of vasodilator. Magnesium also blocks the center of the NMDA receptor, the NMDA receptor, so that it is, um, it is then going to prevent excitotoxicity to a large degree. You've got the nitrates, which are the precursors to nitric oxide, so you're going to have more vasodilator going around your body. Fiber protects from leaky gut, also protects against leaky blood-brain barrier. Um, these things make a person stronger. Like I said, having a purpose, being kind of stoic, you know, just accepting that you can't, not bothering with the things you can't change, change what you can, being religious, religious people are much healthier, you know, you sort of turn your stress and your problems over to God to some extent, plus it says that life is meaning and there's hope, uh, laughter, enjoying beautiful things, beautiful art, beautiful music, etc., they all make us happy, sunshine, you need that for not just vitamin D, but also for your precursor nitrate for nitric oxide and to restore the, the sulfur in your glycocalyx, um, get your sleep, and uh, maintain your social networks. I showed a picture previously, the filial uh, piety and charity. Basically, some old uh, guy had uh, paraplegia, and his family supported him, and he lived for, uh, for years, versus without family support, he wouldn't have lived at all. You know, it makes a big difference having some type of social support. So anyways, I thought that was rather beautiful, that you're not just screwed. You're not just screwed. There's lots of things you can do to fight back. And that's also why I was real happy. I gave us a couple of videos recently about congestive heart failures, failure patients treated with a vegan diet. Now, Walter Kempner had done that. Nathan Pritikin had done that. John McDougall had done that. Baxter Montgomery did that. And Robert Osterfeld did it. So a whole bunch of people done it. And probably uh, Kempner did it the most, but his stuff didn't get into wide recognition. So it's it's a, it's a well-known thing. You could, conjure, you could cure congestive heart failure quite often if you get to it early enough and you do all this stuff. Understanding it empowers you because not only is this... Not only is this why do I think this is an academic organ? Because 
Martin Paul, he figured out all these cycles, but he doesn't know anything about nutrition. He doesn't know anything about toxicology. And what I'm telling you is, this is what is thought to be the most likely mechanism of chronic fatigue syndrome. That's a big deal. It ruins a lot of people's lives. Multiple chemical sensitivity. That ruins a lot of people's lives. Fibromyalgia. They all get told they're crazy. All right. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Tons of people got PTSD. Go for syndrome, according to Martin Paul. Um, and he thinks ALS and Parkinson's as well. It's quite extraordinary. All right. And being the central thing as sort of an end stage pathway in um, congestive heart failure. And what you want to do is all this stuff. So you prevent all this stuff. And there's a simple reason. Why is it like this? Because low-fat vegan diet is the species-specific diet for humans. Okay, so this is going to be part one. And I wanted to kind of give you the key point and summarize it right here in the beginning. Because I know a lot of you, you know, a lot of people aren't going to want to watch all the other ones. But I'm, now I'm going to go and make additional parts two, three, and four about how it all really works. I'm going to go through the, these cycles in more detail individually uh, for the motivated persons. And so anyways, I uh, hope you found that helpful.